I have a collection of medieval art, uh, and I have long loved the, the, the style and the feel of it um, since, um, well, since high school when I traveled around Europe on, on a bicycle trip uh, to Mont Saint-Michel, to Chartres, to, to a number of other major Gothic sites. Um, I continued by studying medieval history in university and then a, a master's degree in, in medieval history at Columbia. And then at some point I discovered one could actually own parts of the Middle Ages. I've always been most interested in the earlier periods, uh, Romanesque, um, 12th century sculpture and, and miniatures to the degree one can find them, there's, there's not so many around. Um, and then Gothic and, and uh, up into the early 1300s. Um, and I've collected across genre. So I started off uh, looking at miniatures, um, uh, you know, paintings on parchment from, from manuscripts. Um, they're pretty accessible. Uh, and, and, um, but then moved on to, to stone sculpture. Uh, I have quite a few 12th century uh, Romanesque capitals, um, and, and I have some quite large, quite massive stone sculptures um, that are a challenge to, <laughs> to organize, to display, to move. That, that's, that was sort of the inspiration, and that's been the focus uh, over the years. Um, it's been, I guess, 27 years now since I started. Um, and now I'm beginning I guess maybe a little older, I've accumulated some of these things, uh, I'm beginning to catalog them. Um, the, the miniatures have been published in three catalogs. Um, the cataloging process has been fascinating for me. It's allowed me to learn a lot about what I have. And I see the catalog cited um, in, in other areas, so I think it's, hopefully it's been useful for other scholars who are working on, on the field. This set of leaves is, is especially fascinating uh, because of the, the sort of intellectual history of the, the books behind them and also because of the scale and size of the leaves. Um, it's unusual to find full page, large full page miniatures like this um, uh, available uh, and, and there aren't that many around uh, in existence. One of the most interesting manuscripts in the McCarthy collection is a series of leaves, five of them. Um, seven survived, two are in uh, another collection, um, which come from one of the most important books that was illuminated in Avignon uh, in uh, the early 14th century. It uh, belongs to a book uh, written by Henry of Coretto, who is a scholar, Franciscan scholar, tra trained in Paris. What we know uh, about this book is that uh, they, it survives in two unique copies which have never been edited or read by any modern scholar. So uh, the images that uh, have been extracted from that book um, are very difficult to interpret unless you're able to read all the inscriptions. The diagrammatic effect of these uh, images is very important um, because it illustrates a text that very, very few people have read. Uh, it belonged, uh, it, the first instance we believe, to Pope uh, John XXII, and it was probably presented to him through an intermediary such as Cardinal Stefaneschi. Now, we, we know that because Francois Avril at the Bibliothèque Nationale identified one of the initials as being by one of the great Italian artists of the early 14th century, the St. George Master. However, the rest of the book is uh, not uh, by this artist, it's actually uh, illuminated by uh, another artist who uh, seems to be local, perhaps from Toulouse, but it's very uncertain where this artist came from. It appears to be southern French um, Avignon, Toulouse area. The diagrammatic effect of these, these uh, miniatures is very, very significant. This was first studied by uh, Michael Evans in the uh, 1970s uh, where he explained that these were actually geometry of the mind uh, for the Middle Ages. What, what he meant by that was that uh, they, they understood that these images were not uh, narrative and they were not 
um, uh, devotional, they represented a state of mind and a vision. So when, when you look at these images, uh, what you see is the vision of Ezekiel. And the vision of Ezekiel uh, concerns uh, the wheel. And the interpretation of that uh, is what we are seeing in these images. The diagrams that were inserted were then uh, quite uniquely uh, removed prior to the uh, 17th century probably. And we know this from documentary evidence and so their survival is even more remarkable and unique in, in the history of book illumination. And then in 1647, the owner of the miniatures uh, wrote a letter offering them to, for sale to someone else, and um, I have that letter. Uh, so to be able to accompany uh, the miniatures today from an offer for sale 350 years ago, uh, well, it's, a, it's an aspect of provenance that one doesn't always get to, to combine. I mean, there's usually big gaps. Um, eventually, they, they made their way to Argentina. Um, and the, the story, at least, is that uh, on a trip to Spain in the 1800s, uh, a family there bought them and then passed it on down through that family up until uh, 2003 when they, were, when they were bought in Argentina. So it's... It, the, the, the parent manuscript itself is quite an intellectually interesting um, uh, adventure and, and uh, an attempt. And then the history of that manuscript and its leaves uh, over the last 700 years uh, you know, adds more to the story.